Mount Rainier, the snowy giant towering over Seattle, is literally losing its crown. Its glaciers, which once blanketed roughly 30 square miles, about 77 square kilometers, of the mountain, have shrunk dramatically. Recent surveys show that roughly 42% of Rainier's historic glacial area has disappeared since the late 1800s. That massive ice pack was once the largest glaciated area of any volcano in the lower 48 states. The melt is not just a summertime thaw, it reflects a long-term climate-driven imbalance. Mountaineers and climate scientists alike have watched Rainier turn darker around its flanks as snow and ice vanish. Especially around the middle, it looks much darker, the color of rock instead of snow, observes glaciologists viewing the mountain today. Even small questions become urgent ones. As the ice melts, what happens beneath it? Are the volcano's own heat sources playing a role? And could these changes foreshadow greater geologic upheavals? The data paint a stark picture. In 2023, the National Park Service released a comprehensive report documenting Rainier's ice retreat. In that 125-year span, from 1996 to 2021, the park's 28 glaciers and perennial snowfields lost about 53.8 square kilometers of area, a 41.6% reduction. Even more strikingly, the total ice volume has plunged. Modern methods combining LIDAR and photogrammetry show roughly 3.742 cubic kilometers of ice have melted away roughly 52% of the park's glacial mass. In other words, Rainier's ice cap is now about half of what it was a century ago. These are not vague models, but hard measurements from aerial surveys and repeat maps. And the pace of change is accelerating. In the last two decades, the decline has sped up. An analysis by park geologists reveals that between 2015 and 2021, Rainier lost about 3.3 square kilometres of glacier area, roughly 4% of its remaining ice, in just six years. That translates to an annual loss rate of around half a square kilometre, about two-tenths of a square mile per year, roughly twice the average rate seen over the entire record. In fact, modern surveys suggest the most recent six-year melt rate is about two and a half times higher than the rate from 2010 to 2015. Alaska aside, few volcanic peaks on Earth are losing ice so fast. In practical terms, each summer Rainier's glaciers shed another slices of territory ice that will never grow back under current conditions. Why is the melt so ferocious? The proximate answer is climate. Warmer air means less snow, more rain, and stronger melting. Over the high Cascades, winter precipitation increasingly falls as rain, so the annual snowpack that feeds the glaciers is shrinking. We're getting more rain falling than snow, and we're getting less snow accumulating explains Scott Beeson of the Park Service. Snow normally blankets and insulates the underlying ice. With that seasonal shield thinner and shorter lived, even mild warm spells lead to direct ice melt. Moreover, recent temperature records show striking warming at Rainier's summits. A recent elevation survey found that late summer air temperatures up near the top are on average about 2.75 degrees Celsius hotter now than in the mid-20th century, nearly a 5 degree Fahrenheit increase. Those extra degrees have huge effects. In 2021, the so-called heat dome sent Pacific Northwest temperatures sky-high, melting virtually all the winter snowpack on Rainier by midsummer. More recently, unusually warm nights meant the ice had almost no chance to refreeze. This climatic push 
is the main engine of Rainier's shrinking glaciers. At the very summit, changes are especially dramatic. Until recently, Rainier's highest point was Columbia Crest, a snowy ridge capped by the Emmons Glacier at 14,410 feet, about 4,392 meters. New geodetic surveys reveal that this ice summit has melted down by roughly 6 meters, about 20 feet, in recent decades. In fact, all of Rainier's traditionally ice-capped peaks have thinned. A GNSS GPS study of the five peaks in Washington that once had year-round summit snow found that four of them lost at least six meters of height from melting ice since 1980. On Rainier, what used to be the highest ice dome has now sagged enough that a rocky knob on the southwest rim has become the true summit. Recent field measurements put Rainier's height at about 14,399.6 feet, roughly 4,391 metres, about 22 feet lower than the old benchmark. Two of the five formerly ice-top peaks, Rainier and El Dorado, now have exposed rock summits, and three have already lost their perennial caps altogether. These shifts are not flukes. They match the uptick in summit warmth. As the GPS world analysis notes, late summer temperatures on Rainier's peaks have climbed by nearly 3 degrees Celsius since 1950, strongly implicating climate warming in the ice loss rather than any new magma input. The unfolding glacier retreat is not uniform. Smaller cirque glaciers are vanishing first, especially on the sunny south side of the mountain. The latest glacier survey removed one tiny ice patch, Stevens Glacier, from the park's glacier list because it no longer shows evidence of flow. Two other south-facing glaciers, Pyramid and Van Trump, are now perilously fragmented each losing roughly one-third of its area and about 40% of its volume in the most recent survey period. Park scientists warn that any glacier smaller than about 0.2 square kilometres, roughly one-quarter square mile, in that climate could disappear within decades. In practice, that means a dozen or more tiny glaciers may vanish soon. Even the larger glaciers on Rainier will retreat to higher elevations, shrinking in length and thickness. Satellite imagery already shows that in midsummer few glaciers reach down as low as they used to. The physical processes behind this melting are straightforward glaciology. Less winter accumulation plus more summer melt yields a strongly negative mass balance. In glaciological terms, the equilibrium line altitude, where accumulation equals ablation, has risen up the mountain. Rainier's glaciers now live in a narrower high-altitude band, where summer heat can ablate their limited mass faster than the thin winter snowpack replaces it. Without replenishment, any ice that melts in summer is gone for good and as the icy surfaces recede, feedbacks accelerate the melt. Dark rocky debris, once covered by snow, becomes exposed and absorbs more sunlight. Indeed, climbers and observers say Rainier looks browner now than in previous decades. Its old white cap has cracked into dark rock and dirty ice. Some of this is simple solar physics. Bare glacier ice is darker than pristine snow, and so absorbs more solar energy, enhancing melt. Beyond warming air and sunlight, the volcano's own heat does influence the ice, but at a smaller scale. Rainier's summit hosts fumaroles, steam vents, in its two craters, and hot springs lower down. These vents continuously emit steam and hydrogen sulphide, keeping patches of the summit free of snow and creating a network of glacier caves warmed by volcanic gas, the largest known cave complex in any volcano. Over time, the heated fluids chemically alter nearby rock, turning it into crumbly, clay-rich debris. 
In effect, Rainier has always been leaking heat. Even in the 1950s, geologists noted that geothermal heat keeps some craters nearly ice-free. Today, that hydrothermal system is still active. Seismic swarms at Rainier occur now and then, but USGS notes these quakes usually coincide with movement of hot fluids in the volcano's plumbing, not rising magma. Crucially, monitoring finds no unusual ground inflation or gas release that would signal an imminent eruption. In short, the mountain's internal heat budget is unchanged. It is the sky above that has warmed most dramatically. The net effect is that fumaroles and hot springs now melt the ice even more efficiently, simply because there is less insulating snow and ice to begin with. As the ice retreats, the exposed slopes are becoming geologically restive. Glacial ice once buttressed and smoothed many steep valley walls. Now, as ice vanishes, those cliffs lose support and start to fail. Climbers report an increase in rockfalls off ice cliff and other high faces. As UW glaciologist T.J. Fudge notes, shrinking glaciers have actually been kind of holding up the rock around them. As they shrink, rock becomes less stable and you can get rockfalls. Indeed, many glaciers are now debris-covered. Old rock slides and rockfall talus that used to land on ice remain there, and in places today the glaciers appear armoured by rubble. This makes the ice surfaces darker and further hastens melt, but also means sudden landslides onto a glacier could send even more debris downslope. Below the glaciers, newly exposed moraines and steeps of unsorted gravel are hazardous. Geologists warn that as Rainier thaws, rainstorms and meltwater can easily trigger debris flows. These fast-moving slurries of mud, ice and rock are already one of Rainier's greatest geologic hazards. Every year the park sees small mud flows, but some are enormous. In fact, seven out of the 23 park developments are built on old Lahar deposits. Observers note that many recently proglacial streams are choked with sediment. During heavy rains, especially above steep broken rock, the loose fill can mobilise into violent flows. The park's recent assessment bluntly warns that rapidly retreating glaciers are exposing large areas of loose sediment that can be mobilised during rainstorms, outburst floods and debris flows. That is not idle speculation. In 1947, for example, a sudden drainage burst out of Kautz Glacier on Rainier's south flank, carving a mile-long ice canyon and hurling some 50 million cubic yards of debris into the valley. It was the largest modern debris flow recorded on Rainier, and it dramatically reshaped the Kautz Creek Canyon. Larger lahars remain a top concern. Only about 5,600 years ago, a summit collapse produced the Osceola mudflow, which buried roughly 212 square miles of lowland all the way to modern-day Tacoma. A similar eruption today would be disastrous, but even without an eruption, the destabilizing ice and hidden meltwaters mean Rainier's slopes are spring-loaded for more rock slides and flash floods. Geologists are watching closely. The signs of heating around Rainier are in many ways indirect, warming air causing ice loss and the volcano's usual hydrothermal heat becoming more evident as its icy cap thins. Instrumental data so far show no new magma intrusion. The mountain remains at background seismic levels, but the rearranged surface is itself a symptom. The recession of glaciers alters the volcano's stress state and water circulation. There is interest in whether unloading of ice might cause slight rock uplift or changes in pressure on any shallow magma. Indeed, Rainier already exhibits periodic swarms of small quakes linked to pressurized fluids in the shallow crust. It is possible that the vast loss of ice mass, more than half of its weight, 
subtly affects the ground's flexure, but any volcanic response to that will play out over years or decades. For now, the dominant driver beneath the disappearing ice is clearly the climate. Unsatisfied snowpack and relentless summer warmth, not a new volcanic heartbeat. What does this mean for the future of Rainier? Geologically, the peak will continue to change shape. Its summit will remain lower, and some glaciers will vanish entirely. The meltwater that now feeds rivers, and that trout and salmon rely on, will eventually diminish in late summer, unless new accumulation returns. The landscape around the mountain is becoming rockier and more treacherous. Mount Rainier's title as America's most dangerous volcano derives from its ice-heavy slopes and proximity to Seattle, and those perils remain. If an eruption occurs, there will be far less ice to melt in a sudden blast, which might reduce, in a relative sense, the volume of an immediate lahar. But the pathways for water will have been carved already. Hundreds of square kilometres of lowland lie in old Laha tracks, and those will not change soon. In short, Mount Rainier is being unmasked. Its seasonal and long-term glacial retreat is the clearest signal so far. Beneath the white shroud, the mountain's hot innards are simply what they always were, a steamy system of fumaroles and hot springs powered by subglacial magma, now exposed more than ever. The dominant process reshaping Rainier today is the warming climate. The volcano's own geothermal processes accentuate local melting, but have not changed in kind. Yet the combination of the two is not benign. More exposed rock means more geologic hazards. A warmer, ice-free flank means any volcanic heat or eruption will behave differently. The melting ice is both a symptom and a catalyst of change. For volcanologists and glaciologists alike, Rainier has become a natural laboratory, a living mountain where atmosphere, cryosphere and geosphere interact in real time. Every fraction of a metre of ice lost tells a story about heat and flow, of how Earth's climate and its fiery heart are jointly sculpting an iconic peak. If you found this deep dive fascinating and want to keep uncovering more powerful stories like this, make sure to like the video, share it with others who love learning about our changing planet, and hit that subscribe button so you never miss an update. And do not forget to tap that hype icon. It helps this channel reach even more people and keeps the momentum going.